You're listening to the Platform Launchers podcast. I'm John Stonge, and it's great to have you with us. As always, it's so fun to be able to talk about building and growing and monetizing our online platforms. And we've got a variety of things for you tonight. We're going to be talking about building brand awareness. And before we jump into that, I just want to highlight two people who are in our members club. One of the things that we do each month, we have a monthly challenge. And our monthly challenge is to just share about the different things that we've got going on in our platforms to help cross-promote one another. And so I want to introduce you to two people. Maybe already, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you might even recognize their names. But the first person is Phyllis Jenkins. And Phyllis... Tell us a little bit about something special you have going on in the near future. Well, my special is to invite women to come and join our Writer's Journey membership. That's where we are helping women to turn their life challenges into life-changing messages. Uh, in other words, help you tell your story, bring clarity and meaning, and help you to flourish while you're doing so. I love that. And Phyllis, where's the best place that they could go to find out more? Absolutely. Go to my website, which is phyllisjenkins.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-I-S-J-E-N-K-I-N-S.com. Love it. Definitely check it out, phyllisjenkins.com. And I also want to introduce you to my friend Brad Miller. And Brad, you've got an event coming up that you want to tell us about. Indeed. Uh, hey, good, good people. Good, good to be with you and with John and with the whole crew here. Uh, for the second year in a row, I uh, sponsor the podindy.com podcasting conference at podindy.com. It is a live in-person and virtual podcasting conference. This year, our theme is to profit from your podcast enhanced by AI. And our keynote speaker is Hall of Fame podcaster, Dave Jackson. He's going to, our whole thing will be helping people build a business around your podcast enhanced by AI. It is November 9th, live and in person in Indianapolis, Indiana. If you're nearby, come see us. But we also have a virtual ticket for only $27. And if you put in the code John, You'll get 15% off. We'd love to see you. I'm Brad Miller. You can find this conference at podindy.com, P-O-D-I-N-D-Y.com. All right, Brad, thanks for sharing that with us. And uh, please take advantage of that, that code as well. Code John, J-O-H-N. All That's right, it. friends. That, very good, very good. Well, in just a moment here, we're going to be talking about this idea of uh, building brand awareness. And this is something that, that I think a lot of people think about, at least to some degree. Now, I recently had a conversation with my wife about this, and uh, we were just talking about brand awareness. And here's how this came up. She was attending a conference on behalf of an organization that she's part of. And at this conference, she she thought that most people would be well aware of the organization, but she quickly came to realize that many people in attendance were not familiar with the organization that she represented. And so she asked me, we were actually talking about this while we were driving in the car just recently. She asked me if I had any suggestions on how that could be improved, how awareness of the name of the organization, how brand awareness could be built on behalf of the organization. And I have to tell you, brand awareness is something I think about frequently. I remember a group of years ago, I would hear people talk about it. And I wondered to myself, is that just a trendy thought? Is that something that people are going to be talking about very much? Or is that just something that, I don't know, for a little while people are talking about, and then they'll, then they'll be talking about something else. But I've learned it's very important. It's important for those of us that are building online platforms. It's important if you're if you're attempting to build a business of any kind. And I have to tell you, as someone who leads multiple online platforms, so I have two primary online platforms, and as someone who is training others to do the same, to lead their own platforms, I have learned that building brand awareness is absolutely a concept worth investing time and intentional effort in. Now, little backstory here. Several years ago when I started Platform Launchers, 
I knew it was important for me to make this a recognizable brand online. If I if this was going to be something that actually connected with people, people needed to be aware of it. I needed to be intentional about that. A year and a half ago, I when I launched Bible Study Headquarters, that's my faith-based website, um, I knew that the same was true, that when I launched that, I needed to take the same approach that I utilized when building platform launchers. And so what I thought we would do for this week's podcast is that I would just simply offer an overview of how I've been making each platform a recognizable brand in its respective space. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start broad, and I'm going to give you an overall picture, and then I'm going to bullet point kind of a checklist of some things to do. So here's really what it comes down to. In general, when we're talking about building brand awareness, it always comes back to serving an audience. Hear me on that. It always comes back to serving an audience. The primary reason anyone is going to search for or access or utilize my content or your content is if it effectively meets a need. It has to meet a need. So in my case, my platforms are only relevant if they remain helpful. So I'm always asking the question, what needs am I best equipped to meet? I also ask, is there a way that I can help others that uh, that really other people aren't adequately offering help? And so I look for those opportunities. I think, all right, what needs am I best equipped to meet? Is there a way I could be helping people that other people haven't really thought of or don't seem to be doing well if they're doing it at all? And I ask these questions to help me develop various forms of content. I also ask these questions to help me decide on various services that I might be able to offer. But I also, at the same time I'm doing that, I want people to become familiar with my brands. So my two primary brands are platform launchers, and Bible study headquarters. Those are the two things that I'm focused on. So what I'm doing, and this is just a broad overview, I'm going to get more specific in a moment. What I what I do is I intentionally attempt to show up in various places. So this begins with the fact that I create a series of daily and weekly podcasts. I also show up on YouTube. I partner with some of the largest websites on the internet and allow them to use my content for free with attribution and with backlinks, but I allow them to use my content for free. I also speak at conferences. I write books, and I frequently give those books away for free. I show up as a guest on other people's platforms. That's a huge one. I also create courses that I allow others to access freely and then share those courses with large and small groups without making them jump through a bunch of legal red tape or anything like that. And in addition to that, I also make sure to keep my websites updated which immediately helps with my SEO. And if you're curious about how that works, just do a search for my name on whatever search engine you prefer to use. If you use Google, use Google. If you use something else, use something else. But just do a search for my name or the names of my online platform. So if you do a search for John Stonge, if you can figure out how to spell my name, most people get it wrong, uh, but just search for my name. Or you could search for platform launchers, or you could search for Bible study headquarters. And by the way, if you're in front of a computer, I'd actually encourage you to test this out. Just give it a try so you could actually see what I'm talking about. But this is what you're going to see if you actually choose to do that. If you actually type any one of those three things into a search engine, you will see that my sites are indexed, that they appear at the top of the search results, and that many of the sub pages are listed as well. And here's how that came to be. My choice to be helpful, prolific, consistent, and show up wherever the doors open has resulted in ongoing brand awareness that continues to expand, and I've really enjoyed watching that grow. Brand awareness can contribute to something else in addition to that. It's not just indexing in search engine, engines and things like that. It also, it also contributes to momentum. Brand awareness contributes to momentum. Once you build awareness for your brand, that awareness has the potential to grow exponentially, far beyond your initial efforts. So in some ways, it actually feels like that awareness takes on a life of its own as the content you've created sometimes months ago, sometimes years ago. It continues to drive people to your platform. So that's the overview I wanted to start off with here. But now I want to get practical. 
And I want to give you kind of a checklist here, or a bullet point list of some things that you can utilize. I've already given you now the general overview of how I build brand awareness and the things that are in the back of my mind as I'm trying to do that. But these are now additional suggestions that I think you might also find helpful. So I'm I'm saying that this could be maybe like a brand awareness checklist of sorts because the suggestions that I'm about to share are an excellent place to start. It's also excellent to revisit, even if you're well beyond the starting stage. It's also just wise to come back to these things. So let me just share. Here's my bullet point list. The first one is this. Number one, develop a strong brand identity. And I've got a few thoughts about this. So first of all, start with your logo. When you think about developing a strong brand identity, start with your logo. Keep your logo simple. Keep it readable. Keep it memorable. I would suggest that you select colors and fonts that you like and then use those colors and fonts repeatedly on your website and on your other marketing materials. Then from there, this is all under developing a strong brand identity. I would encourage you from there to emphasize your tagline. So I have a tagline that operates like a subtitle for each of my platforms. Here for platform launchers, you hear me say it every time I open up the show. We talk about build Building, growing, and monetizing your online platform. Sometimes I even say, you know, we take your passion, turn it into a platform so you could earn a paycheck. Those are taglines that go with the brand identity that I'm trying to build. But basically your tagline is a simple one-sentence phrase that tells others what it's all about. And then tell your story over and over. People love stories. So tell your story over and over. Your platform has a story. So tell your story when you do interviews, when you write content, when you record audio, when, when you record video. These are all aspects of developing a strong brand identity. All right, number two, leverage social media. Now, I will say this about social media. I have not built my platforms on, on a backbone of social media, but I do use social media as a supplement. I'm primarily using my personal social media as this supplement, but I just want to let you know, if you have an interest in using social media, maybe even more than I do, there are clever ways that you could leverage social media, or maybe not even clever, that might not be the word, obvious ways or clear ways. This is what I mean. First of all, if you're going to use social media, show up consistently. Now, again, I am not overly dependent on social media when it comes to building brand awareness, but I use it some, and like all things, anything I'm ever trying to build, I've discovered that if you show up consistently, it works better. So if you're going to use social media, don't be haphazard. Don't be occasional. If you're going to use social media, show up several times each week without fail. That's a big part of what you're doing to build brand awareness, leverage social media. But I have some some tips about how to use social media. I would imagine for most of us, it is best for us to keep our social media content light and helpful. Some people get way too heavy, way too deep, reveal too much information about themselves, and it gets awkward or negative. One of the worst things people do with social media is just complain and highlight negative news. And I see that sometimes, and, I, and really, when people do that, I usually uh, don't find myself engaging with their social media because of that. It, it, I think it's best to keep social media light and helpful, because if your brand remains inspiring, if it remains helpful, people are more likely to seek it out. If you are the bearer of negative news primarily, then people are going to associate what you're building with negative news news. Something else that I'll mention related to social media before we go to number three on my list is this. Partner with others. When it comes to social media, partner with others. There are people with bigger platforms than you. There are people with bigger social media followings than you. Look for ways to partner with them. You can even partner with people who have smaller platforms as well, because either way, whether it's a larger platform or smaller platform, when you're partnering with people, they are going to introduce your content to their audience. So partner with others so that you can ultimately leverage social media correctly or helpfully. You can share their content. They can share your content. Partner with others that way. It can be very helpful. All right, number three on my list, if you're trying to build brand awareness, and I have kind of like four sub points under this one, but number three on my list is this. Go overboard with content marketing. 
go overboard with content marketing. Let's start with videos. People love videos, whether it's social media, whether it's YouTube, whether it's free online courses. That was something that our group was just talking about before we went live with the podcast. People gravitate toward video content. And if you're shy about making it, get unshy because people love videos. And videos tend to be, right now, the primary way people are utilizing online content. So if you're shy about it, get unshy because people love them. But people also love audio. I was looking at some stats. I'm currently teaching a, a podcasting course at a local university. And so I, I just looked at some updated stats on podcasting. And what I discovered did not surprise me. But what, uh, what the stats are saying is that podcasts continue to grow in popularity. And studies are showing that podcasters are now some of the most trusted voices in almost every subject area. So recording video of your podcast being recorded, even if the video is nothing more than you sitting behind your microphone, is something that has also become extremely popular. So this is a form of content marketing. And I'm saying don't just record a podcast. Sometimes you might want to record a video of you recording the podcast. Go overboard with content marketing. By the way, what am I doing right now? Am I practicing what I preach? I'm recording a podcast, but I'm recording video of me recording the podcast. And the video gets shared on YouTube. The audio gets shared online through a podcasting channel. And so it's just a wonderful way to go overboard with content marketing. But here's some other ways you could go overboard with content marketing. Blogging. I, re I reference it all the time because blogging is one of those ways that you can earn free internet real estate in search results. I recommend writing at least one blog post every week. I do that for both of my platforms. It helps me in multiple ways. What it does is it indexes my, my uh, websites much higher in search results. People find my sites based on the specific questions I'm answering in my blog posts. It's a very effective way to do content marketing and to go overboard in that content marketing. Here's another thing with content marketing. Give away plenty of your content for free. So even though I earn income from books and from courses, and from other content and services that I'm creating, the majority of my content is given away for free. I bet you more than 90% of the content that I create on a weekly basis is given away for free in blog posts, in videos, in podcasts, all of that. And I've been consistently doing that for about a decade now. And I have to say, what that's that's contributed to many things, hopefully helping people being primarily what I'm I'm seeking to do, but it's also contributed to building a large and loyal online audience because I keep showing up, creating helpful content for the people that I'm attempting to serve. So you want to go overboard with your content marketing if you're trying to build brand awareness. Here's another suggestion. This one I'm going to just hit really quickly before I jump to number five, but this is number four. Optimize your website for search engines. So do some SEO. Two very quick things I'm going to say about this. First, optimize your website with relevant keywords, with meta tags, with headers, with alt text for images, things like that. Just do stuff like that, and it'll help your content to show up quicker in search engine results. Some people don't ever think about SEO, and they're missing the boat when it comes to that. If you just do a little SEO, little search engine optimization through keywords and some related concepts, your content becomes immensely more discoverable. But secondly, use good SEO in the titles of your blog posts and videos and podcast episodes. And I've said this before. If you've been listening for a while, you've probably heard this before. But I always encourage people, title your content based on the questions you think people are actually typing into a search bar. That is one of the most effective SEO strategies I've ever used. I title my content based on what I think people are, are searching for in a search bar when they just you know go on Google or wherever to try and find content. All right, number five. Number five on this list of building brand awareness. Participate in community and industry events. So first of all, related to that, participating in these events, conferences are great. When I'm trying to build a brand, I, I typically, what I like to do is I apply to speak at conferences that are relevant to my subject. There are some people live on the call here that I've either spoken at conferences with or they've been present when I've been speaking at conferences. It absolutely works when you're trying to build brand awareness. It's a very effective way to get word out 
And it's also a great way to reach large people or large, not just large people. I meant to say large groups of people, but it could probably reach large people as well and maybe even small people. But large groups of people in a short period of time, it's a very effective way when you're going to conferences because conferences typically, and we even heard Brad Miller say this related to the pod indie conference that he's got coming up. A lot of conferences they're in person, but they're also streamed at the same time. So just keep that in mind. And sometimes people pay for access to the recordings of the live sessions at conferences after the conferences have happened. So conferences can be a great way uh, to, you know, just participate in community or industry wide events. Online summits are also helpful. They're becoming somewhat trendy. So I'd encourage you, if you're willing, jump on the trend, make yourself available to speak at them. Often, this is how those things work. Uh, typically, the sessions are pre-recorded, almost like a podcast episode. So you pre-record it, then you send the recording to whoever's organizing the online summit, and you just pass it along, and then they use it, and then it goes live when they make it live. But here's another thing that you could do. Sometimes maybe it's just good to host an event of your own. Uh, you don't have to wait for someone to invite you to their event if you're trying to become an authority in your subject area or build brand awareness. Sometimes you could just, in a way, declare yourself an authority by hosting your own event. And you can invite some recognizable names. And I, I imagine your brand will benefit from co-branding with them. So just kind of an interesting way to build some brand awareness by participating in different community or industry events. All right, number six on my list is this, collaborate with other brands. A little bit longer of, um, of a show this week, but I want to include all these thoughts in building brand awareness. And collaborating with other brands is definitely an effective way to build brand awareness for what you're building. Brand partnerships can be a win-win. So partnering with a, a more recognizable brand, it could actually be one of the most, just one of the fastest ways to spread word about your brand. And it might also help the other brand, particularly if they are interested in serving your tribe. So do a brand partnership, partner with another brand, make it a win-win that way. Here's another thing, and I love doing this when it comes to collaboration, create free content that you allow other platforms to use. Some people would never consider doing this, and I think they're missing the boat. I'm encouraging us, all of us, don't be selfish with your content. Let other people use it. One of my most effective collaborations is with a very recognizable brand that republishes my weekly blog posts on their website. I'll get more specific. I, I create a weekly blog post every week at BibleStudyHeadquarters.com. Christianity.com is one of the major faith websites on the Internet, and they republish my content every single week on their website. In fact, as I'm recording this earlier today, I got a um, an email from my editor at Christianity.com uh, just letting me know that this week's podcast, or this week's blog post, I should say, from my website at BibleStudyHeadquarters.com is now appearing at Christianity.com. And this is what they do. They change the titles of my posts to meet their audience's needs, but they leave the main content unchanged. So it'll be the same post with two different titles, one on my site, one on their site. And at the end of the post, they always state that the content came from my platform and it's being used with permission and they include a backlink back to my website. So I'm not being stingy with content I've created. I'm letting them use it for free. It benefits their website, but it also benefits what I'm building online. All right, two more. It's kind of a long list tonight, but we're talking about building brand awareness. Here's another thing. Another way we could build brand awareness, leverage email marketing. Leverage email marketing. Build your list with free content. Every time you give something away on, on your website, make sure you give people an opportunity to give you their email, that they have to sign up on your email list as you're giving some of those free pieces of content away. And then message that list weekly with a preview of your most recent blog post or an announcement of a new product or service that you're offering, but build your list with free content and then message that list usually once a week, sometimes two. Um, and that, that's something else I'll say about this. Don't spam your list. Once you build your list, don't spam your list or you won't have a list, right? I email my lists for platform launchers or for Bible study headquarters once or twice a week, but typically not more than twice and usually just once. 
And I'm convinced that I know some people that email their list all the time and maybe it works for them. I don't know, but I, I am not convinced that that's the strategy I want to use because I think it ends up muting your voice because it treats your messages like they might be a little less valuable because there's something constantly every single day. So I prefer an approach where I, I email my list once or twice a week. Some people disagree with that approach, but that works out well for me. One last thing. Final thing on my list of building brand awareness, and that's this. Encourage user-generated content. Encourage user-generated content. Well, what am I talking about? What kind of user-generated content? Well, one of the things, or I guess a couple of the things that I like to use, I, I like to welcome guest blog posts and really other forms of user-generated content on my websites. Because when you allow others to create helpful content for your platform, you both benefit. So the way it works is like this. Not only do you have more content to share, but you also gain a new advocate who will share it for you. What I've discovered is that people are highly likely to share content that's on your platform when it's content that they created. So if you allow someone to you know, if you post something on your platform that somebody else created, they are likely to share that with their audience. And then their audience comes back to your website to check out that content. And then they see all the other things that you've got going on there. So welcome things like guest blog posts and other forms of user generated content. That's a very helpful way to build brand awareness. I hope, you know, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, if you're listening to us via the podcast, I truly hope that you found some of these ideas helpful because building awareness for your brand is critical for your success. If no one knows you exist, how are you going to succeed in the marketplace? But sometimes people think, oh, it's impossible. How could I ever do this? And I'm telling you, building brand awareness is not as difficult as some people mistakenly assume that it might be. You don't have to do everything that I listed on this list. These are things that I'm doing. I didn't start doing them all at once. These are things that I gradually started doing over time. But I could testify to the fact that these are things that absolutely work. And I know they work. And it's not just a fluke because I've done this with more than one platform. And I've also recommended this approach to many people throughout the course of time that I've been doing platform launchers and just having conversations with people and teaching some courses uh, in the university context and writing books. And people tell me, they're like, we've tried these ideas and they work. So I'm encouraging you, if you're listening to my voice right now, give some of these suggestions a try and watch as they help you build traction. Watch as they help you build brand awareness. And I'll even say this as we wrap things up. As always, if I can be of any further help, do not hesitate to reach out to me via email. My email address is john at platformlaunchers.com. That's john at platformlaunchers.com. Send me an email. I do my best to reply to all the emails that I receive. I rarely, rarely miss one. So if you send something to me and uh, and I don't reply, that means I, I didn't see it or it got sent to spam or something like that, try again. But if I could be of any further help, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, john at platformlaunchers.com. That's the email address to use. And while you're at it, check out the website, platformlaunchers.com. We've got a whole bunch of stuff there that'll help you build, grow, and monetize your online platform. So that was a mouthful for this week. But lots to say about building brand awareness. I think it's important, and I hope that you found this useful. But that is our finale for this week. We're done. We're done. It's time for me to take a little bit of a break now, right? Actually, I'm going to be talking to our members club in just a moment. But I appreciate you listening to this podcast, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're listening through your podcast app, uh, I'm grateful to be able to spend this time with you every week. And as always, I look forward to catching up with you again right here next week. In the meantime, make it a great week. Build, grow, and monetize your online platform. And we'll catch you right back here real soon. Talk to you then.